Hello everybody. How you doing this evening? This is Darlene Shelton and I hope you all had a wonderful, wonderful Lord's Day today. Today is Sunday, May the 6th and um, I hope that you were able to make it to worship service, to worship in spirit and truth and to learn about the Lord and what he's done for us. So today again, we're still reading from Sarah Young's 365-day day of devotion. And so this is what it says for today. This is what I say. I who made you, who formed you in the womb, and who will help you, do not be afraid. I have always been involved in your life, even before you were born, because you are mine. Purchased with my own blood, you can count on my promise to help you as you journey through this world. This is how you gain victory over fear, through trusting in my ever-present help. The problem arises when you gaze too long into the future, trying to visualize and take control of those not-yet-events. A future focus can easily deteriorate into a problem focus. Weeds of worry and fear spring up quickly in this sort of soil. When you realize this has happened, turn away from your worries and back to the one who is lovingly present with you. Rejoice that I will stay I mean, excuse me, rejoice that I will still be with you when you arrive at each coming stage of your journey. <clears throat> Lean hard on my presence, trusting me to help you today and all the days of your life. Scriptures for this evening. This is what the Lord says, He who made you, who formed you in the womb, and who will help you. Do not be afraid, O Jacob, my servant, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 2. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Psalm chapter 46, verse 1. Surely or only goodness, mercy, and unfading love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days, the house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. Psalms chapter 23 verse 6. So, God knew us before we was born. Before we came through that, that, that birth canal of our mother's womb. He knew us way before then. Isn't that amazing? He's with us. He helps us. He wants us to come to Him. And that is His promise to help us in this world so that we can make it to Him in heaven. You see, this world is not our home. This is just a dwelling place for us to, to, to learn how to be transform or should I say learn how we are to be Christ like allowing God to transform us to be what he wants us to be so that we can be reconciled to him so he's he's taking care of us down here he's he's teaching us about him he's teaching us how to be towards one another you know as Christian people as God's children He's teaching us how to, to live, how to be obedient, and what happens when we're not obedient. He teaches us those things. Everything in the Bible is for our learning and for us to live by. And when we live by those things, everything else will fall in place. And that is God's word. He will take care of us. 
So, and he's here with us through everything we go through down here. This whole journey is about him. And it's about us becoming like him. So continue to trust and believe, be patient, and, you know, on this walk and, and, and just lean on him and praying every day without ceasing. Being forgiving, being caring, being understanding, and praying and asking him for wisdom and knowledge because we need that. So... That is our lesson. Well, not our lesson, but our devotion for the day. And I just want to remind those who, and encourage those who are in the body of Christ, to continue to stay in the body of Christ. Don't leave and go back, y'all. It's nothing out there. And it would just get worse every time you go back. And it'll be harder for you to come back. And you never know because we don't know for one second, one minute, one hour of the day from the next if we're going to make it so never think you go back and you might make it you might not have the opportunity to come back and for those who have fallen away I highly encourage you to get restored back to the Lord and repent ask God for forgiveness and ask for prayers and then for those who don't know the Lord who don't believe in the Lord, that he exists, get to know him. I don't see how anyone can say that God doesn't exist when you have all of this that's evidence of his existence. And that can't not be denied. So, for those who do not know the Lord, the plan of salvation. First, you have to hear the word. But in order to hear the word, you have to be taught the word. So, or shown the word. And so you get with somebody that you, you want to learn the word, the truth. And that comes from Mark chapter 12, verse 29. And then as you hear the word, you believe what you were shown in the Bible and you believe what you you heard and that's Hebrews 11 and 6 then once you believe and then you will repent so you repent you're, you're sorry for all the things that you ever done thought said you're sorry for those things and that it comes from Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Then you confess that Jesus Lord. You confess before the world that the Lord, Jesus, is God's Son. That is Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. Then once you confess that before the world, then you are baptized into the body of Christ. You are added to the body, not joined. You're added. He said he adds daily. And that's from Acts 2.38. And then, once you are baptized into the body of Christ, the Church of Christ, baptized believers belonging to Christ, then you are saved. And then, that's when you receive the Holy Spirit through baptism. And then, once you're saved, we must Go through the process of living faithful to death or to judgment judgment day. And when I say process, because everything in life is a process. You have a lot of things that we have piled up from society that's been conditioned in our minds, in our spirits. So it's a process to learn to undo those things by allowing